Interview. This evening, a man and woman come to interview Mac and also George and Julia. The man has a large and heavy camera perched on his shoulder. He films me as I make my pictures. He films Ruby in her cage with her foot roped to the bolt on the floor. Mind if I take a look around, he asks. Mac waves a hand. Be my guest. While Mac and the woman talk, the cameraman walks through the mall. He pans his camera right, left, up and down. When his eyes fall on the claw stick, he stops. He trains his camera on the gleaming blade. Then he moves on. The early news. Mac turns on the TV. We are on the early news at five o'clock. Bob says, don't let it go to my head. There we all are, Mac, Ruby, me, George and Julia, the billboard, the mall, the ring, and the claw stick. Signs on sticks. In the morning, several people gather in the parking lot. They're carrying signs on sticks. The signs have words and pictures on them. One has a drawing of a gorilla cradling a baby elephant. I wish I could read. Protesters. More people with signs come today. They want Ruby to be free. Some of them even want Mac to shut down the mall. In the evening, George and Mac talk about them. Mac says they're protesting the wrong guy. He says they're going to ruin everything. He says, thanks for nothing, George. Mac stomps off. George, holding his mop, watches him leave. He rubs his eyes. He looks worried. Dad, Julia says, looking up from her homework. You know what my favorite sign was? Hmm, George asks, which one? The one that says elephants are people too. George gives her a tired smile. He goes back to work. His mop moves across the empty food court like a giant brush painting a picture no one will ever see. Check marks. A tall man with a clipboard and pencil comes to visit Ruby. He says he is here to inspect the property. He doesn't say much more, but he makes many check marks on his paper. He looks at my floor. Check. He examines Ruby's hay. Check. He eyes our water bowls. Check. Mac watches him scowling. Bob is outside, hiding near the dumpster. He does not want to be a check mark. Every day, there are more protesters and a camera with bright lights. Some people are carrying signs, shout, free Ruby, free Ruby. Ivan, Ruby asks, why are those people yelling my name? Are they mad at me? They're mad, I say, but not at you. A week later, the inspecting man comes back with a friend, a woman with smart, dark eyes like my mother's. She has a white coat on and she smells like lobelia blossoms. Her hair is thick and brown, the color of a rotten branch teeming with luscious ants. She watches me for a long time. Then she watches Ruby. She talks to the man. They both talk to Mac. The man gives Mac a sheet of paper. Mac covers his face. He goes to the office and slams the door. New box. Something strange is happening. The white coated woman is back with other humans. They place a large box in the center of the ring. It's ruby sized. And suddenly I know why the woman is here. She's here to take Ruby away. Training. The woman leads Ruby to the box. She places an apple inside. Good girl, Ruby, she says kindly. Don't be afraid. Ruby inspects the box with her trunk. The woman makes a clicking sound with a little piece of metal she is holding in her hand. She gives Ruby a piece of carrot. Each time Ruby touches the box, she gets a click and a treat. Why is she making that clicking noise? I ask Bob. They do that to dogs all the time, Bob says. I can tell he doesn't approve. It's called clicker training. They want Ruby to associate the noise with the treat, 
When she does something they want, they make that noise. Great job, Ruby, the woman says. You're a quick study. After many clicks and carrots, she takes Ruby back to her cage. Why is that lady giving me carrots when I touch the box? Ruby asks me. I think she wants you to go inside, I explain. But there's nothing inside, Ruby says, except an apple. Inside that box, I say, is the way out. Ruby tilts her head. I don't get it. See the picture of the red giraffe on the box? I think the lady is from the zoo. Ruby, I think she's getting ready to take you there. I wait for Ruby to trumpet with joy, but instead she stares at the box in silence. I'm not sure you understand. The box might be taking you to a place where there are other elephants, I say. A place with more room and humans who care about you. But even as I say these words, I remember with a shudder the last time I was in. The last box I was in. I don't want a zoo, Ruby says. I want you and Bob and Julia. This is my home. No, Ruby, I say. This is your prison. Poking and prodding. The lady comes in. She brings an animal doctor with an awful smell and a dangerous looking bag. He spends an hour with Ruby poking and prodding. He looks at her eyes, her feet, her trunk. When he's done with Ruby, he enters my cage. I wish I could hide under knot tag like Bob. Instead, I do a nice loud chest beat and after a moment, the doctor retreats. We're going to put, need to put this one under. He says, I'm not quite sure what he means, but I strut around my cage, feeling victorious anyway. No painting. No one asks me to paint today. No one asks Ruby to perform. There are no shows, no visitors, unless you count the protesters. Max stays in his office all day. More boxes. I wake up from a long morning nap. Bob is on my belly, but he isn't asleep. He's watching the ring where four men are placing a large metal box. It's me sized. What's that? I ask, still blurry from sleep. Bob nuzzles my chin. I believe that box is for you, my friend. I'm not sure what he means. Me? They brought in a bunch of boxes while you were sleeping. Looks to me like they're taking the whole lot of you. He says, casually licking his paw. Even Thelma. Taking, I repeat. Taking us where? Well, some to the zoo, probably. Others to an animal shelter where humans will try to find them homes. Bob shakes himself. So I guess all good things must come to an end, huh? His voice is bright, but his eyes are far away and sad. I'm going to miss your stomach, big guy. Bob shuts his eyes. He makes an odd noise in his throat. But what about you? I ask. I can't tell if Bob's just pretending to sleep, but he doesn't answer. I gaze at the huge shadowy box and suddenly I understand how Ruby feels. I don't want to go into that box. The last time I was in a box, my sister died.